Welcome back to this regex mini series. In this video, we'll actually match an email address. We learned enough to do that. We learned how to construct patterns, how to make sure that we match a full word and how we create patterns from left to right. So keeping the order of characters in mind. All these things are important for matching email addresses. So let's dive into matching an email address in this video. So the goal is to match an email address. I want to match addresses like test at test.com, but also test server at test.com or something like test tester at test.com and also with other words. So like test server farm at test.com. So all that should be matched. These are all valid email addresses. Now we learned about the various features for building regular expressions and we learned that we read it left from right so that it uh, left to right so that it is parsed left to right and also that the order of the rules we add here is important it's from left to right so we have to order it from there so let's start by parsing this simple email address besides the obvious regular expression which looks like this which is not useful at all what we want to do in the end is we want to allow something which has text, a at sign, more text, a dot, and then more text. This is a basic email address rule we could start implementing and then we can fine tune it to also be able to handle special characters like the dash or numbers or stuff like that. So let's start with just text. For this, we can create a range and say A to Z and A to Z capitalized should be allowed as a valid email address. Now, obviously we want to group multiple individual characters together. So by adding a plus, we're saying there should be at least one character and then as many characters as you want. We can't use a star here because that would mean if it's no text at all, it's also valid. And that's certainly not the case. We want to have at least one character. Now we can also say this is the first part of our email address. We certainly also want to be able to handle the at sign then. And after the at sign, there should be room for more text. So we can basically copy that first range with a plus and add it. And now we're saying any regular expression which has text and then at and then more text is treated as valid. Now, as we can see, we should also consider that dot here and then the domain at the end. Now, to take care about the dot, we can simply add dot, but that would actually mean match any character. The dot is a special rule. So if we really mean the dot and not any character, we have to use backslash dot to escape it, which means escape the default meaning, which is any character, and use the original meaning, which is just a dot. And then we want to, well, have more text for the domain, I guess. So let's again copy in or paste in the rule we had before to match any character. So this would be a basic matching rule. As you see, it matches this email address. If I remove the dot, it's not matched. If I remove the at, it's not matched. And if I remove this text here, it's also not matched. We also see that it doesn't match this. And if we tell it to actually match a full word, um, it would actually not match this too, because there it only matches this portion. Well, it should match the full part though. So this is not a perfect regular expression for matching email addresses, because there are a lot of cases where this will basically treat something as incorrect, even though it is a valid email address. Still, we are using the things we learned thus far, ranges, ordering, to build a regular expression from left to right. We just need to fine tune it. For example, here before the at, we want to allow special characters like the dash. And we also want to allow the one, so we want to allow numbers. So we can add all of that to the range. Zero to nine, for example. Now all of a sudden this is treated as valid. And now let's also add special characters like an exclamation mark, a hashtag, the dollar sign, the end sign, the underscore, the dash, the star, all that stuff. You can of course also add the question mark, the caray, the 
curly braces. The tilde. Is it called like this in English? Tilde? Tilde? I don't know. It's this sign here. All these things, well, the dash, we learned that, should go at the end, though, because otherwise it's treated as a range generator. And now you could add more special characters, but now you see this also is treated as one match and as a valid email address. If I remove the ad here, it's no longer treated as such. So this is already looking good. There still is some refinement needed, though, because if I copy that email address and now also have maybe test solutions here, it's no longer a valid email address because we only allow special characters and numbers in the part in front of the ad sign. We also want to allow it after the ad sign though, so that we also could have test solutions 9089. Well, for that, we can of course copy our updated range from before the ad sign and replace the range after the ad sign to target this area. So everything in front of the dot which separates the domain ending. We can simply paste it in here and now this is also treated as a valid email address. If I remove the dot, it's not. If I remove the domain ending, it's not. If I remove the ad sign, it's not. So this is already a much better regular expression because it has clear rules like the ad sign in between and the domain ending at the end. But it also allows for a broad range of characters being used, which you can use in reality in email addresses. Now, this pattern still has some flaws though. What if we have this email address, but we don't have test-server, but test.server, which also clearly should be a valid email address. This is then treated as incorrect. It's not grabbing this part in front of the dot. And therefore, if we would say, hey, it should have be one single string, which is completely matched, this would fail. So we need to include the dot and we can do so in our first range, which allows different characters by adding the dot. Here inside a range, we don't need to escape it. If we add a dot inside the range, it's not treating this as any character, but as the dot character itself. The dash is the only special character inside a range, which has, a, which has the special meaning of creating a range here. So now it's matching this with the dot. The problem just is, if I remove test here, it's still matching this. So an email address starting with a dot would also be matched. And you can argue that this should not be the case, that valid email addresses shouldn't start with a dot. So therefore, this is not the way we should do it. We shouldn't include the dot into our entire range here. Instead, what we want to say is the email address should start with any character, any special character that is not a dot, then it may have a dot, and then it may have this dot followed with any other character. Actually, if we have a dot, it shouldn't be right in front of the ad, side e uh, ad sign either. So a dot should only be allowed if it is preceded and superseded by characters and should never be allowed directly in front of the ad sign or at the start of the email address. For that, we have to fine tune our rule in front of the ad sign a little bit. We basically want to add the dot here. Now here outside of a range, we have to escape it to take the dot itself. And then we could again use our any character rule to allow for a dot in the email address. Like here, test.server form, it's now allowed again. The good thing is, the rule down there with the dot at the beginning is not matched. And that's exactly what we wanted. The problem now is all the other email addresses are also not matched now. Why? Because we basically say the dot here, that it's not inside a range. It's not one of many characters you may use. It's outside of a range. So it has to be there. You have to have a pattern where you have some characters, a dot and more characters. Just as with the add sign, which we also place between two ranges to say the add sign has to be present. Now for the add sign, that's correct. For the dot, it's not. So therefore, the dot should be optional. Now we could add a question mark to make it optional. And now with that, we have a valid email address here with the dot in between, but a wrong email address here with the dot at the beginning. If I add the dot right in front of the add sign, it's also not a valid email address. So this is a good thing because here we say the dot is optional, but it has to be followed by more characters. 
So that's exactly what we want here. So with the dot added, it's working fine. But if I add more dots here, you see we have the issue that it only fetches the one dot in front of the add sign and the part in front of it. But if we then have more dots and parts in front of these dots too, it's not fetching this because our pattern is saying a valid email address is any character of this range, a dot, which is optional though, and more characters and then the add sign. But only one dot is included in our range. Now we could fix this by adding a star which says zero ohm or more, but then still we have the issue that the whole group here of dot followed by text and preceded by text is still a may only occur once. So we need to fine tune our rules. Let me delete the star and let's instead create a group which includes backslash dot and ends after the plus in front of the add sign, making this whole part here, so the dot and then this range, a group. Now with that group, we can say this whole group, so this whole pattern of dot followed by characters is optional by adding a question mark or better by adding a star saying it may occur zero or an infinite amount of times. So it's not just optional, which would be zero or once, but it's optional in both directions. May occur none at all or may occur as often as you want. And with that, a dot at the beginning still is invalid. A dot in front of the add sign still is invalid. But if you have groups, so text and dot and text and dot in front of the add sign, this may occur as often as you want with this setup. So this is a better solution to allowing dots in front of the add sign. Now, what about the part after the add sign? If I have test.servers.com, now you see it's also not treating the whole string as a valid regular expression. It's now omitting the domain ending for a single reason. The pattern after the add sign says, there should be a dot and after the dot, there should be some text, the domain ending. But if we have multiple dots with text separated in between our part, between the add sign and the domain ending, then this last group of dot followed by text is actually treated as the domain ending. And this of course is incorrect. So we need a different pattern after the add sign too. And here we basically need the opposite of what we used in front of it. There we said we need any character followed by maybe multiple occurrences of dot with characters. Now we want to say, we clearly want to start with a character after the add sign, but then we also may have these groups of dots and text, but in the end we definitely need dot something. So what we want to have is any character after the add sign, at least one character, and after that character, before the dot which marks the ending of our regular expression, I want to have something optional, so I'll group it. I want to have a range where we allow A to Z and zero to nine, let's say. We probably also should tweak that range and only allow A to Z and zero to nine for the domain name. So that is the range after that first part. So here that's after the add sign. And then that's what we just created with the parentheses here with that range in between. And that range may occur as often as you want. So not at all or an unlimited amount of times. But important, this part is now grouped together with the dot and the part right after the add sign. Now with that, we're saying the add sign should be preceded by at least one of these characters and then optionally by more characters which are followed by a dot. Now we just have to allow this pattern one or multiple times by adding a plus and now you see that the domain also is in again. And of course one thing I need to fix is that this group here, so the part after the first characters after the add sign should allow a dash so that these are valid email addresses again or that this is a valid email address again here. Now with that we got a pattern which looks good to me. We are making sure that we allow a lot of characters and dots in front of the add sign, that we allow dots after the add sign, but that we also require at least one dot. So this would not be a valid email address if we remove the dot com. A dot at the end also is not valid. We need to have one character after it at least. 
A dot right after the at sign also is not treated as valid, but all these other combinations are valid. So this is looking good to me. Now a finished regular expression could say, of course the full input should fulfill this pattern. So we start with this curry and we end with a dollar sign. And now if we get rid of all the other inputs here, you see this is matched, this is matched, this is all matched here, this is looking good to me. This is how we build such a more complex regular expression, really by thinking logically about it and then testing some edge cases, some special cases, and you might also find some room for improving this. Especially email regular expressions can get very complex and long if you want to consider all possible combinations. Oftentimes though, you just want to do some rough validation on the client side, so you don't need the perfect rule. In the end, email should always be validated by sending an email there from your server side. But this is how we build such a regular expression. The idea behind it can really be hard to get if you just looked at the entire pattern since it looks very intimidating. But if you build it up step by step and think about, yeah, I want to allow this and I definitely need a character in front of that, then it should be much clearer. So let's dive deeper into more regular expression features over the next videos then.